Thanks for clicking. Adjustable rate mortgages are going to be the sweet spot when the Bank of Canada finally pivots. This according to a new article in the Financial Post that is making the rounds. Yes! And while we've seen some of the damage caused by borrowers taking adjustable rate mortgages when rates had nowhere to go but up, with many predicting that rates are coming down in the near future, variable rate usage is on the upswing. And we're seeing article after article alerting us to that fact. Yet, the post article that is making the rounds stops short of suggesting buyers evaluate whether or not variable rates are right for them. Rather, noting simply that cash strap borrowers will jump on the variable train. Given that Bank of Canada Governor Tiff Macklem noted just two days prior to the article's publication that rates aren't coming down as fast as they went up, I think a bit of history and analysis might be in order. Nah, you don't need that. So what I want to do today is go over the Financial Post article, take a look at exactly what is wrong with the suggestion that cash strap borrowers take a variable rate mortgage, as apparently it's not self-evident, take a look at the history of rate drops here in Canada, and then go over some mortgage math. As always, the Bank of Canada's interest rate decisions will be based off Canada's inflation data, which is set to be released on March 19th. We'll obviously have an update out on that data on this channel. Click like and subscribe if you want to get those updates, but for now, let's get into this article. On to the article. The article begins by noting that while many floating rate holders are waiting for rate cuts like kids wait for Santa, cash strap borrowers will jump on the variable rate train once those rate drops start, as 100 basis points worth of rate cuts will lead to a 9% reduction in monthly payments. The suggestion that cash strap borrowers take variable rate mortgages is definitely not a new one. The crystal ball himself, CEO of Royal LePage, Phil Soper, suggested in June of 2021 that specifically young buyers take a look at variable rate mortgages. Soper even went on to note that in the long term, variable rates perform better, apparently referencing the widely cited and rarely read article from Moshe Malevsky, which found that long term, variable rates do perform better than that of fixed. With that said, Soper also seemingly ignored the part of the study which specifically says variable rate mortgages probably aren't a good idea for first-time home buyers who don't have the equity in their home and probably can't afford the swings. Leading to the obvious question, did Soper just not read the study which he referenced, or did he read it and ignore the part that doesn't fit the narrative? And I don't know which one is worse. Now, as a brief side note, the study does say that when rates are higher than their historical average, they do tend to move back down, but we'll address that later. Regardless, the Financial Post article in question doesn't spend any time suggesting that buyers evaluate whether or not variable rate mortgages might be right for them, but rather goes on to suggest tips for how buyers take variable. As soon as you can. And a discussion of the pros and cons of variable and fixed rate mortgages would definitely have been prudent, given that variable rate usage is on the upswing. With Scotia recently noting that variable usage has gone from single digits up over 20% as of recent. Farah Omran, I probably butchered that, of Scotia Bank recently noted that buyers are betting that because house prices are set to go up when rates drop, that if they buy the house now on a variable rate, interest rate cuts will be significant enough to offset the higher initial payments and reduce the overall cost of the mortgage over the long term. So the idea is that if you buy the house now, you'll get the lower house price compared to a few months from now, and when rates come down, you'll get that lower rate as well. The best of both worlds lower prices and lower rates. What could possibly go wrong? But how likely is it that those bets are going to materialize? Given that a decent five-year fixed insured rate is currently sitting at 4.84, and a decent variable rate insured is sitting at prime minus 1.05, or 6.15, a 1.31% difference. So, on its face, just in terms of payments, the Bank of Canada would have to drop rates by 1.31% in order to get the payments on a variable rate mortgage back down to that of fixed. They'll do it f***ing tomorrow, my personal guarantee. Well, when we look back at previous rate cutting cycles on the part of the Bank of Canada over the past 30 years, we can see that the only time that the bank cut rates by that much, absent a major financial crisis or COVID, was between 1995 and 1996 as well as 2003 and 2004, but that was only by one and a quarter. When those interest rate cuts happened in 1995, the unemployment rate was sitting at 9.7%, and the unemployment was sitting at 7.9 in 03 and 04. Canada's unemployment rate is currently sitting at 5.8% pre-COVID, save 2018, a 50-year low. 
And finally, during 95 and 96, when we saw those cuts, the inflation, probably due to the 10% unemployment rate, was well below 2%, as it was during the 03 and 04 cuts as well. So, yes, we have seen Prime get cut by as much as 1.3%, which would put the payments of a variable rate in line with that of fixed. But they always come amid major economic problems, either almost 10% unemployment rates as we saw in 95 and 96 and 03 and 04, or amid a major financial crisis or a major global pandemic. Woohoo! Where do I sign? And that 1.3% would be the minimum drop that we would need to see just to make the variable rate mortgage worth it, just in terms of payments. We would have to see an even bigger drop in the policy rate in order to make it worth it long term, as borrowers would have to recoup some of that money they lost during those first few months when they paid a much higher rate than that of fixed. So, let's assume that happens. Right now, the markets are predicting 175 basis points worth of rate cuts by December of 2025. Let's use the current benchmark price of $718,000 using minimum down payment requirements with the CMHC insurance equals a total mortgage amount of $697,860. And we'll compare that mortgage amount using the 4.84 fixed currently available with the prime minus 1.05. Over the five-year term, if nothing changes, the fixed rate payment is $600 less and saves $47,000 over that five years. But let's throw in those 175 basis points worth of rate cuts. We'll do seven cuts over two years, with the Bank of Canada cutting once every other month. You f***ed up, buddy. Yes, technically I know that's not possible as the bank only meets eight times per year, but this is just for illustration purposes. So we'll throw in those seven cuts and over the next two years, borrowers who took fixed paid $65,000 in interest, while those who took variable paid 66422 at the end of those two years, those who took variable are indeed making lower payments, now paying 3782 down from the 4560 where they started, compared to the 3900 being paid by those who took fixed. But remember, those who took variable paid a premium in the beginning, and in fact, they won't be in the net positive until the end of year 3, at which point they will have saved $1,700 in interest. Now, after we get those seven cuts in, say, December of 2025, anything could happen thereafter. But if anyone tells you what's going to happen with rates following December of 2025, tells you where rates are going to be that far out, they're lying to you. I'm going to tell you something. So, if rates do come down as fast as the markets are predicting, and the markets are almost always wrong, then mortgage payments could come down by December of 2025. With that said, borrowers won't be in a net positive position until the end of their third year, if nothing else happens. Now, all of this isn't to say run out and get a five-year fixed rate mortgage. What it is to say is that if you take the variable rate mortgage, betting that rates are going to come down and come down in short order, just be aware of the bet that you are making. You're betting that rates are going to come down quicker than they have for the past 25 years, absent a financial crisis, or you're betting that they're going to come down due to a financial crisis. We'll give it time which 100% is not out of the realm of possibility. However, financial crises are fairly hard to predict, and out of the ones that have been predicted over the past 25 years, I can guarantee you they were not predicted by those that are saying rates are coming down tomorrow and house prices are going to the moon, those who don't even read the studies they quote. As such, for borrowers who are cash-strapped, for borrowers who need those rates to come down in short order in order to make that home affordable, a variable rate mortgage may not be the best option. It may not be the best option if you can't handle the swings. We're seeing the results of many borrowers who got in on the assumption that rates would never go up, on the assumption that the experts knew what they were talking about, and those results are still unfolding. We will continue to track those decisions coming down from the Bank of Canada on this channel. Click like and subscribe if you want to get those updates, but for now, thanks so much for watching.